Hello everyone and welcome to this video in which I will show you how to register for the step 1 or the step 2 CK exam. In the prior video I showed you how to register to get your ECFMG ID and I'll leave the link for that video in the description below. But this video will focus on the process for registering for step 1 or step 2 CK exam after you already got your ECFMG ID and you already completed the form 186. Before we get started, make sure to check out the USMLE webinars. We have fully for free for you to attend and you can sign up to them by clicking on the link that I'll leave in the description below. In addition to our USMLE resources, which is a list of emails with very helpful information regarding step one, step two CK, best resources, studying strategies, and you can sign up to this fully for free by putting your name, your email, and you will get these resources delivered to your inbox. And you can sign up to these by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below. After you log in your ECFMG account, you can go to begin a new application and click on USMLE step one and or step two CK. If you already have a saved application, you'll be able to see it here and you can continue your application here. So the first thing you will encounter once you click begin your application is important information regarding SFM provision of performance data to medical schools. So most of the time, you'll, these are like terms and conditions and you just scroll to the end, read them if you like, and then click I agree. Then the first question you will get here is if you have a license in the United States. If you're a medical student, they're also uh, highlighting that in red. If you're a medical student, it's very unlikely that you have a, a physician license. So they're talking about a physician license in the US. So if you have a physician license, you can pick yes, but most of the time you won't have a physician license in the US and you would click no and then click next. And then it will ask you if you're applying for step one or step two CK. And in our case, we're applying to step one. After that, you click next and it will take you to the next screen. Item three is one of the most important items uh, in registering for the step one exam, which is the eligibility period. If you're not familiar with the process for registering for the step one exam, when you sign up, you don't have to pick the exact date of your exam. You pick an eligibility period, which means it's a three month period in which you can pick your exam date. So when you sign up now, you just pick that eligibility period. And sometimes you might want to do your exam outside that period. So you have to go through the extension process and I'll leave the link for uh, that in the description below. But here you can see the uh, first eligibility period is October 1st to December 31st. And then you have November 1st, December 1st, January 1st, and so on. So go ahead and pick your eligibility period and click next. Then another very important aspect related to your step one exam is where are you taking your exam? Because you can take it uh, in multiple regions. And here it gives you description and uh, information about what countries included in what region. For example, although uh, Egypt is in the continent of Africa, uh, they're asking you to select Middle East if you want to do it in Egypt. Um, India, although it's in Asia, it has its own testing region. So, and you can see there is an extra charge for doing the exam outside the US. The only place that is zero zero is the United States and Canada. And that is separate from the price or, or the fee for the step one exam. So because you're doing it internationally, there is a surcharge for that. And it's the same across all regions outside the US. So pick the testing region and then click next. Then it asks you if you need any disability assistance or accommodations. So if you have that or if you need that, you can click yes. Otherwise you can click no and next. Then it shows your name, last name, first name. And then it asks you to confirm if that name is uh, correct. And this, the same as what appears on your current and expired passport. Be very careful about the name issue because I've seen many students who end up uh, sending many emails, having many calls, and sometimes it takes them months to resolve because they put the wrong name on their application. And when they go to the exam, if it shows some, some different name, they won't let you in in the exam. So make sure your name is the same as uh, what shows on your passport because you probably have to show your passport when you go to the Prometric Center to take the exam. So these two names have to be the same. So if it looks the same, you can click yes and move on to next. Then it asks you for your contact information, including your residence. So you put the country, the street address, your email, and your telephone number and click next. 
Then it asks for your social security number and or national identification number. If you're outside the US, you won't have a social security number. So don't worry about that. Just put whatever national identification number you have and where is that coming from. Then it will show your date of birth. I can confirm if that was correct or not. And then you put the birth city, the birth state and the birth country and click next. Then it asks for your gender and to confirm that that was correct or not. Uh, the native language, whether it's English, other, or don't wish to respond and they're telling you choosing a particular answer will not affect the outcome of your application. These are mainly used for research data or analyzing how many people are applying to the exam, from which countries, so that will not affect your application. It's probably mainly for internal purposes. And here you can pick other languages spoken. Then we go to the citizenship and you can put your citizenship at birth upon entering medical school and now and it asks you if you have a permanent US residency or a green card and if you answer yes you write the year issued and if no you move on to the next box which asks about your current passport you add your current passport number the country that issued that passport the passport expiration date and if you don't have a passport you can check this box then it asks about your ethnicity and they also confirm that answering this question or not will not affect the outcome of your application. Then it asks about your present employment, if you're currently employed or doing any type of work. If you answer yes, you can fill the information here for your employment. If not, you can move on to the next box, which asks about postgraduate medical training and whether you completed postgraduate medical or surgical training. Uh, postgraduate medical training means residency. So if you did residency in your home country or in the US, uh, you can click yes. If you did not do any postgraduate training, you can click no. Then it asks you if you'd like to sign up to the ECFMG reporter. And if you do and you want to receive updates, which I recommend, you can check this box and then move on to the next question. Now moving to item 17, which is another very important question. And sometimes students have questions about that is the medical education status. So it's asking you now at the time of completing this application, are you currently a medical student or a graduate? So if you officially graduated from your medical school, you can click I'm a medical school graduate. If you're still a student, you can pick a student. However, sometimes you have finished your final exam, but you're not graduated yet. And in that case, you have to defer to what does your school consider as graduation. If your school consider your date of graduation, the date of your exam or your final exam, then if you're applying after that, you're graduate. If they consider your date of graduation, the date of giving you the diploma, which might happen months after, you might be still a student until you get that diploma. And then you can pick your medical school. If you can't find your medical school among this list, you can click this search for expanded search options or you can contact the ECFMG regarding that. Before we keep going, if you're studying for step one, step two CK, or even step three, and need help with these exams, we have phenomenal, amazing tutors ready to help you. They will help you pick the best resources with the time you have to finish these exams, advise you on best study techniques and study strategies, and also provide subject-specific tutoring where they can explain difficult concepts to you. Let's say you're struggling with biochemistry, they will explain these concepts you're struggling with, go over questions, explain these questions to you, focus on the high yield concepts so you don't get lost among the thousand pages that you have to study from. And our goal is to help you. So that's why we made this service 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you get one hour, you're not happy, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. And you can explore the different packages, the amazing experience that our students had with this service by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below. And you can also talk to our customer support team, see how we can best help you uh, what are the different packages if you have any questions about them and I'll leave the link to schedule this free consultation with our customer support team in the description below as well. Then it asks about the dates of attendance of medical school. So what date did you enter medical school? So that was the first date of your you attending your medical school and what date did you complete the requirement for the final diploma? So in, in the case of you having a final final exam, that would be the last date. How many years did you attend and graduation date and then date of medical diploma issued. And that is again, one of the things that people confuse sometimes is what is the graduation date? What is the date of medical school diploma? And what is the date of uh, completing the requirements? So the date of you completing your final, final exam is this one here, date 
you completed the requirements for the final medical school diploma. The graduation date might be the same as your date of medical school diploma or the same as you completing the exams. So again, you have to check with your school, what do they consider as your graduation date? Is it the date they gave you the diploma or the date you finished your exam or maybe another date? So check with your uh, medical school administration regarding that. And then the title of your medical degree. Is it MD? Is it MBBS? And here they're telling you that you have to confirm that this is your actual degree because sometimes you might think that your degree is called something but in reality it's something else. So they have actually a full guide here uh, around that and you can see your school uh, or your country and what kind of degrees they issue. So I recommend you check that out before you write what the medical degree title that you have. And some countries require you to complete an internship before you receive your medical school diploma. That is not the case in all countries, but some countries have you do one year of mandatory internship so you can get your diploma. And if that's the case, you can click yes and fill the internship start and end date. And other countries have a mandatory government slash social service prior to you getting your diploma. So if you have that, you can click yes and fill the start and end date of that. Then for a minority of students, things get more complicated because they attend multiple medical schools. And in that case, you can add any additional medical schools you attended. They start in one medical school and then they transfer to another. And there is always complications associated with that. And sometimes things get uh, confusing. So just add the medical schools if you have questions uh, make sure to reach out to SFMG. They're very responsive uh, so they can answer any questions you have instead of making any mistakes with these situations. If you only attended the medical school you mentioned in the question before, you can click on next. And this question covers transferred credits to the medical school that gave you your medical degree. So if you did not do that, you can just click next. This question covers clinical clerkships. And they have a definition for that here, it refers to the period in your medical education in the clinical disciplines during which as a medical student. So only during your medical school time, you gain practical experience in hospitals or clinic through rotations, pre-graduate internships, etc. I'm honestly not sure what the value of asking about clinical clerkship for the application of step one. I'm not sure if they use it just for internal purposes or it affects the application. But if you'd like to add information regarding clinical clerkships, you can click add here and then you can click next. Here it asks about your medical diploma and you have three options to pick from if you have graduated from medical school already. Uh, graduated and already submitted the diploma. Graduated and you're submitting the diploma. Graduated but you have not received the diploma yet. And then you can enter your name as it's shown on your medical school diploma. You can also apply to step two CK exam at the time of applying for step one. So if you wanna apply for both at the same time, you can start the step two CK application here. If not, you can just click continue. And here you have the certification of the application. So you can read all this information and uh, agree to that by checking the box and click next. It will ask you to confirm, you click OK up. Then you will have the application summary where you will have a summary of all the answers that you provided throughout this application. And then you confirm that everything is 100% accurate because changing something is a very, very challenging process. So make sure you get everything right here. They give you the opportunity to check it again. If you want to change anything, you can click on this edit button and it will take you back there and you can fix that and then review again and make sure everything is correct. And then at the end, you will have the summary of the fees. You have the examination fee, which is 1000. If you are doing it internationally, you have a test delivery surcharge of around 200. So the total will be uh, around 1200. And you can either save and come back later to pay or you can check out and pay at the same time. Then it will ask you if you want to pay with a credit card or electronic check. So pick the right option, click continue, enter your card information, make sure everything is correct, and then you can make that payment. And by the way, if you're applying for the step one or step two CK exam and need help regarding best resources to study from, study techniques and strategies, need one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with a tutor to take you through difficult concepts, explain uh, what is important, what is not important, because there is so much information that are covered in these exams. So having someone who's experienced with, with these exams scored really high and can take you through difficult concepts, make them easily digestible, uh, help you identify high yield versus not as high yield uh, information on this exam would really help boost 
uh, your score and help you prepare for these exams in the shortest time possible so if you're interested in getting one-on-one -on -one tutoring we have phenomenal tutors ready to help you and the amazing thing about this service is that it's 100 percent satisfaction guarantee so if you're not happy we give you your money back no questions asked so go ahead and explore the usmle tutoring service by the match guy and i'll leave the link for that in the card above and in the description below and if you'd like to talk to our customer support team to learn more about how we can best help you ace the usmle exams you can schedule a free consultation with them and they can take you through the different options we have and i'll leave the link to schedule this free consult in the description below as well before you get this conclusion page where it's going to tell you you have successfully submitted the online part of your application so be careful don't stop directly after you pay because you will encounter a few screens before you receive the confirmation that your application was successfully submitted but be mindful that this only completes the online part of your application there is also verification that needs to happen from your medical school. Some schools are in, enrolled in an online format where they can verify your medical student status uh, through an online uh, platform or you need to submit this by mail from your medical school directly to InHealth and their office is in Philadelphia. And they're asking you here to submit all these documents within four weeks, all credentials, and documentation required to complete your application must be received by SFMG within four weeks of the date you submitted the online portion of your application. So make sure to check out with your school uh, how the process works. Check out with your friends and colleagues who submitted the uh, application for the step one and how did they do that so you don't uh, get your exam application rejected. I hope this video was helpful in showing you how to register for the step one exam as uh, you can see it's not an easy process but uh, it's very exciting to see you at the beginning of this journey i remember when i started this journey uh, a few years ago uh, multiple years ago by now <laughs> and uh, now i'm a resident in the us and dream has become true so hopefully that the same happens to you hopefully you finish your step one you crush it you crush your step two you end up matching into residency in the US in your dream program and you achieve everything you hoped for. Before you leave, make sure to check out the USMLE webinars. We have uh, fully for free for you if you're interested in attending and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. In addition to our USMLE step one resources where you can receive a bunch of very helpful information regarding step one step two ck and things related to the usmle exams by signing up through the link that i'll leave in the card above and the description below you put your email your name and you will get these resources delivered to your inbox fully for free and finally before you leave make sure to check out the video i recorded about the updates for the step one exam for this year and you can watch it by clicking on the screen here I wish you best luck on your exam and I'm confident you'll crush it. Peace.